What's up, guys? It's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we are going to talk about some of the areas in which it took me to squat 520 pounds for 24 reps. This has been attempted in the last 20 years multiple times, and nobody has achieved past 23, which was set by Tom Platts somewhere around the late 80s, early 90s. So I was able to beat it at 42 years old, and I'm going to give you some inclination on how I did that. Now, for further information, we're going to go in deeper into the program on Patreon. So make sure you subscribe at the link below, and let's get started. So the first thing that you have to understand is that you're going to have to have the mentality to do so. What does this mean? Well, at first, what it means is that 500 pounds to do for these many reps is going to take a mentality that is solid as granite. Why? Because every rep sucks. So the one big thing that I think most people don't understand what it takes is the mentality. Okay, mentality is huge because at 15 to 16 reps, as you're going to see in the video, as we play this, as we play this particular segment, you're going to see that by 15 and 16, it may look easy, but inside it's an internal war. I have to block out pain. I have to block out tiredness. I have to block out lactic acid, making me want to throw up all over myself. The mentality of this is something that is so hard to, to beat. And there's only a way to do that. The only way to do that is longevity. Mentality, in my personal opinion, is built on years and years and years of grinding. Eventually, everything, every workout, semi sucks all the time. So the mentality is, hey, it's gonna suck, but are you willing to get it done? The answer is hopefully yes. But in reality, I think one of the biggest factors that we can tie into squatting this type of weight for these many reps, and this could be even for you guys that are beginners, this could be squatting 135 for 25 or 20. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that, trust me when I tell you that almost everything after 15 reps sucks anyway. The key is block it out. The next step is endurance. Now it's crazy because you're like, well Matt, I mean 500 pounds you're working out, what do you need endurance for? Trust me when I'm telling you, squatting 520 pounds 24 times takes an immense amount of endurance. But it's not the endurance that you think. It's called anaerobic endurance. And anaerobic endurance is doing something hard for a long period of time. It's like running a 75 or 80% sprint for 800 meters. It's hard because it's fast and it's long. And that's the problem with this squat is that takes a long time. Some people are strong. Let's look at powerlifters, for example. Some of the guys that have tried to do this particular rep range and beat Tom Platz's record might have been strong enough to do it, but they're not fit enough to do it. And this is where winning warm-ups come in. So if I'm constantly doing four sets of 25 on everything, then that is gonna make me a better lifter when I'm going high volume and everything's burning so bad I wanna die. So by having this anaerobic endurance, it allows me to work through the burn, the pain, and the discomfort. So endurance is huge. But what the other reason is, and one of the reasons that I wanted to train for this is because endurance and anaerobic capacity actually keeps you in the game for a long time. If you notice through a lot of my training, which we're going to go into more on Patreon, if you look into a lot of my training, you'll notice that a lot of it is anaerobic endurance, but it's also why I'm nearly 43 years old in one month. I'll be 43, and I'm still able to do the stuff I was able to do in my early 30s and late 20s. Why? Because I'm fit enough. Now, the reason that also that endurance is important is because being fit enough also allows you to recover from extreme workouts. If you're not fit enough, you might be able to do it, but if you gotta be beat up for three weeks after doing something hard, it's gonna have a major impact on how hard you can train in a yearly cycle. And that's the one big thing I think everybody screws up with is they look at, well, what am I doing today? What am I doing tomorrow? What are you doing next year? The thing of it is, is most people, Charles Paulkin was a huge advocate of talking in this way. Most people overestimate what they can get done in a year and underestimate what can be done in five. The same holds true with doing this type of squatting exercises for this much intensity and these many reps. The next factor that we have to deal with to be able to do 520 for 24 is the ability to strain. 
Now, that doesn't necessarily come in those high rep ranges. In my personal opinion, strength is measured between one and five reps. So if you notice in our training, in, in our Train Heroic, Patreon workouts, and manuals, you'll notice that maximum effort days are five or less reps. That's where you actually get stronger, okay? But strength has a huge proponent in endurance. Why? Well, if you can squat 900 pounds, then 500 pounds is only a certain percentage of that. But if you can only squat 550 pounds, there is no way that 520 is achievable for reps because it's too high of an intensity for you. So strength lowers an intensity at the same relative weight. So again, let's say I want to bench 225 like all the guys do in the NFL, and I want to do it for multiple reps. Well, think about it. Our max better not be 225 or we can only do it once. But if we could do 500 on the bench, then 225 is less than 50%, meaning that I can do it for multiple reps. So strength to do this kind of stuff eventually has to rise. So doing heavy singles, doubles, triples, and fives are going to allow you to be strong enough to break new PRs. Again, start thinking about what I'm talking about. There are only going to be a handful of people in each generation that are physically capable and mentally capable enough to do that. But it doesn't mean that you can't push your limits further by getting stronger no matter what those limits are. The last and probably the most important thing of all of this is technical proficiency or form. If you watch this video that we're playing in the background or have been playing, you'll notice that from rep 1 to rep 23, there is no technical breakdown. The shins are staying straighter, the chest is staying up, the head's not falling forward, the knees are not buckling in, the foot pressure is constant throughout the entire motion. I mean, there's half the reason most people screw up squats. The point is, is that form is massive in being able to not only do this type of workload, no matter what your strength level is, but also retain this workload with no injury. If you don't have great form or almost perfect form for your anthropometric build, you are going to not only damage joints, it's also gonna limit your ability to strain through things because you're gonna work against yourself versus for yourself. So make sure that you're dialing in your form, okay? Make sure that form is of the utmost importance while you're training or this will not be possible. So on Patreon, we're gonna go over program layout, we're gonna go over muscle groups that you need to be focusing on, which I find 95% of people are weak at. And we're also gonna show some of the recovery modalities and methods that I used in order to be able to do this. So I'll hopefully see you guys on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. Please go and subscribe and go to winningstrength.com for more tips and help.